Welcome to our online course on programmable logic controllers in industrial automation. Did you know that ladder logic is the most popular programming language in industrial automation? Every automation engineer must have basic knowledge of this code. In this course, you will gain hands-on experience using programming environment Siemens TIA portal and simulation environment Factory AO. To get started, we will guide you through the installation and configuration of TIA portal and Factory AO. If you encounter any difficulties, you can reach out to us in our Discord channel. We provide full support for this course. My name is Jacob Biedulski and I will be your teacher in this course. Provide company. Welcome to the Siemens TIA portal installation guide. In this video, we will walk you through the step-by-step -step process of installing the powerful tool, which is Siemens TIA Portal software, on your computer. Let's start this course with downloading TIA Portal. Under this video, you will find a link to this site. Here, you will find download links to TIA Portal. You will need to download DVD1, all those files. To proceed with the downloading, you have to be registered in Siemens Portal. Click register. And here you have to fill this form to proceed with the download. Usually it takes about two or three days to your account be configured by Siemens. If your account is ready, you can proceed with the download. Go to the DVD one. Login. And download all those four files. When you finish with DVD one setup, go lower and download Zimatic S7 PLC SIM. This is the simulation software that we will need in our course. Okay, stop this video right now and when you will be ready with the files, let's proceed to the installation procedure. Okay, let's start with installation of TIA portal. You have to choose your language, click next. Then you can select standard installation version. You have to accept the license terms. And click install. After installation, you have to reboot your computer. Now let's install PLC SIM.
Okay, your installation process is completed. Hi, I'm Jacob from Control Byte Company. In this video, I will show you how to create your first project for PLC in TIA portal from Siemens. Let's get started. In previous lesson, you have installed TIA portal version 16 and PLC SIM. Now we're going to create first project and write first code in ladder logic to check if all the components of this environment work properly. Firstly, open TIA portal. Now click create new project. Write your project name, for example, my first project. Then you have to specify the path where the project will be saved. For example, on your desktop. Click Create. In the next step, we have to configure device. We can do it in this configuration wizard or we can move on to project view. Click project view. And now on the left side, you will see project tree. Now click add new device. From the tree controllers, choose Cimatic S7-1200 CPU CPU 1211C DC 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 and click on the last item on this list. This is the CPU with the newest firmware on the market. We choose firmware version 4.4 and click OK. Take a look at your project tree. On the left, a new device appeared. This is the PLC CPU 1211C that we have chosen from the list. By default, you are in device configuration view. Here you can configure hardware properties of your CPU for example, Profinet interface, where you declare your IP address. We will move on. Go to Project Blocks. And click Main OB1. You have opened your Organization Block 1. And now we will start creating code. On the right, you can enlarge your view. And now let's place first instructions into our network one. To do this, you have to go to the right tab, click on the instructions, BitLogic operations. And here you have all the basics of the ladder logic. Normally open contacts, normally closed, the coils, flip-flops, and so on. As you can see, on the upper tab, you have your favorite instructions. If you don't see this tab, you can turn on this view by clicking this icon. Now click on the normally open contact, drag it and drop on the first network. Now click on the assignment coil and place it next to the contact. Okay, we have placed the first instructions in ladder logic, but we don't have any variables. We have to go to PLC tags, click on this tab and click default tag table. Here we have to declare the first variables to finish our simple ladder logic program. Now go to first row, click add new and write variable name. For example, push button one. 
if you press enter, it will be automatically declared as input. Click on the column address and change operand identifier to M. This means that we will declare this variable in work memory of our CPU. Such a declaration will be used only for test purpose. In the next lessons, I will show you how to declare inputs, outputs, and how to use them in your ladder logic program. Now declare the next variable, for example, lamp1. It will be automatically declared in M memory with an address 0 0.1. Superb! Now go back to main OB1 and now you can assign a variable to your instruction which is normally open contact and coil. Click above normally open contact, write X and choose push button. Press enter. The same with the coil. Write X, click on the X lamp 1, and voila! Our simple ladder logic program is ready. To check if we can simulate it with PLC sim, you have to save your project, click on the PLC 1, and click on the Start Simulation icon. Click OK on this prompt. Once again OK. And PLC Sim will be started. It looks like little window like this. Now TIA portal will download the PLC configuration and our program to PLC simulator. Click load. You can click start module and click finish. Excellent, our PLC sim is in run mode. If you click little glasses on the upper bar, you will see online view of your program. As you can see, structure of ladder logic is very simple. On the left, you can see a power bar and the signal flows from the left to the right, like in electrical circuits. If the variable connected to normally open contact is false, the signal stops on this contact. If the variable is in high state, you can click on the variable right mouse button and click modify to one. Now the value of this variable equals to true. If value of the variable connected to normally open contact is true, it conducts the current from the power bar on the right and empowers the coil on the end on this branch. In this lesson, we have to make a quick check if all the components of TIA portal work properly. If you can start a simulation and you see a window like this, it means that everything is okay. During our programming course, we will guide you step by step through all the topics related to coding instructions, variables, types of variables, const constants, and PLC configuration. 
This is only the first step in our adventure. If everything works okay, let's go to the next lesson. In the next lesson, we will add a new device to our project. It will be HMI panel. Hi, I'm Jacob from Controbyte company. Let's move on with your TIA portal project. You have already added PLC to your project. Now let's add HMI panel and let's create the first visualization. In previous lesson, you have added a first PLC device to your first project. Now we're going to check HMI functionality in TIA portal. I'm working on the same project from the previous video. Open the project and follow my instructions. Go to project tree and click add new device. Now click HMI button. Choose Zematic basic panel tab. 7 inches the display. KTP 700 basic. And the last one from the bottom. Click OK. Now you can see HMI device wizard. It will guide us through basic configuration of HMI panel. Firstly, we have to choose PLC device. Click browse and select PLC one. Click Next. Uncheck Header. Click Next. Uncheck those checkboxes and click Next. Click Next. And OK. You can also uncheck this checkbox. As you can see in preview, you will get a clean HMI device with no template. It will be perfect for now for our little exercise. Further in our PLC programming course, you will find detailed module explaining how to use HMI template suit delivered by Siemens. Now click finish. and you will see a new device in our project tree. Now you can see the first screen of your HMI panel. OK, let's place first elements on our start screen. Select button, drag it and drop on the screen. You can name it like button 1, enlarge a little bit, click left mouse button on this element and click properties. Click events, select press. Click on the row add function. Click on the edit bits. And select set bit while key pressed. Now in the row tag input output, you have to link the proper variable from our ladder logic program. Press three dots on the right. Click PLC tags, default tag table, and click X push button. And our button is ready to go. Let's configure lamp by selecting basic object, a circle. You can enlarge the circle. Now click Animation tab, select display, 
click add new animation and select appearance. Now you have to link the proper variable. It is X lamp one. Click OK. Now we have to configure appearance changes regarding to variable value. Click on the first row add new. Range zero means that our lamp is switched off. Click add new. Range one. Background color. You can select green. This one means that our lamp is turned on. Perfect, our visualization is ready. Now click on the PLC and click Start Simulation to start PLC Sim. Now download your program to PLC Sim. You have to select the interface, click Start Search, PLC Sim is active and click Load. Click yes. Wait a minute and your PLC simulator is ready. Select start module and click finish. OK, the green lamp run is turned on so the PLC simulator is active, the program is running. Now you have to activate HMI panel simulator. To do this, you have to click on the project tree on this tab and click start simulation. Now the compilation is on and your HMI panel runtime simulator is on. OK, let's rearrange our Windows layout. Open your program in main OB1. and click on Monitoring On. OK, so let's test our program and visualization. The PLC sim is running, the visualization simulator is running, so if I click this button, this little lamp should be switched on. Click, and the lamp is green, so everything is working perfectly. OK, let's summarize our work during this and previous lesson. You created a first project in TIA portal. You configured PLC device and HMI panel. You wrote a first PLC program and created simple visualization connected to your PLC program. We tested simulator of HMI panel and PLC controller. If you manage to do all the parts of this exercise, it means that you have all the necessary tools to proceed with our course. Thank you for watching and let's go to the next lesson. Whether you are an aspiring engineer, student or simply curious about the world of automation, Factory IO is a powerful simulation software that allows you to design and test your industrial processes in a virtual environment. This is perfect tool for our PLC training. Now let's get started with the installation process. Don't worry, it's just a breeze. Just follow these steps and you'll have Factory IO up and running in 15 minutes. Let's start the next lesson. In this lesson, you will install and start essential part of our programming course, which is Simulation Environment Factory I.O. Under this video, I have left you a link to this site. It's factoryio.com. Okay, 
Now let's download this software. Click Try for free. Factory IO is free of charge for 30 days. You can download and install trial version, which is fully functional. After 30 days, you can subscribe to a certain plan. Now let's download this software. Now you have to fill this form, click Start Trial, and you'll get an email with download link from Real Games. Before the next step, let's check available subscription plans and licenses. To do this, click Buy. Now select the Factory I.O. edition that you need. Ultimate Edition delivers all the drivers for Siemens, Alan Bradley, Modbus, OPC, UA, Protocol, and so on. If you don't need all these drivers, select only Siemens Edition. Drivers from this edition are required to finish this course. If you finish your trial period, which is 30 days long, you can buy a monthly subscription only for 17 euros per month. You can also buy yearly subscription or one-time payment. To finish our course, you can use trial version. Most of our students complete the full course by the end of the trial period. You have 30 days free and if you want more time, you can subscribe to this version. Now take your time to download and install Factory AO software. If you do this, let's get to the next step. Under this video, I have attached two files. One project from TIA portal, it's Factory IO template. And the second one, it's Factory IO scene. Please download those two files and start working with me. Firstly, open the TIA portal project. If you open the project, you can notice some special functions that allow communication with factory I.O. environment. In this project, this PLC is configured to communicate with factory I.O. environment. I will show you in a minute which configurations are required. Now click on the PLC in the project tree and start PLC sim. Click OK. OK, download the program to our PLC simulator, start the simulation, and the simulator is in run mode. OK, now let's go to the second file that you have downloaded from our download section under this video. It's factory IO scene. Double click on the icon. And now you can see factory IO scene with one conveyor, one box, and control cabinet with two push buttons. Now we have to configure our driver to communicate with PLC SIM. To do this, go to File, Drivers, click on this tab, and select Siemens S7 PLC SIM. Then go to Configuration, select Model, S7-1200. You can also check Auto Connect. Let's go back. And now please check if your mapping is identical to this screen. If not, just drag and drop certain sensors to those input addresses and drag and drop conveyor to output. OK, now let's check if communication is OK. If your PLC SIM is on, if the 
PLC simulator is in run mode, you can see green check in this region. OK, let's go back to the scene. To start the simulation, you have to press play. Now our simulation is alive. You can control certain elements in this scene. For example, you can push buttons or you can manipulate with the boxes. If I push the button, the conveyor will start. Why does it start? It starts because of my program in PLC simulator. I turned off monitoring. I can see online view of my program. Here I have push button and here I have conveyor. If I press the button, the conveyor starts. OK, now you can pause the video and configure all the things that I have showed you in this tutorial. Please configure the driver, turn on simulation so that you can move your conveyor and the box on it. If you have finished this task, let's move on to the next part of this lesson. Now I will show you some extremely useful tips while working with Factory I.O. Let's enlarge the view of this environment and please press stop button on the top. OK, firstly, I will show you how to move around, how to navigate in this environment. Click File, Options, Controls. Here you can see assigned keys to certain functions like move forward, move backward, move left, move right, and so on. So let's go back to the environment and I will show you how to navigate. If you press A, D, S, W, you will move horizontally, left, right, forward, and backward. Simple. If you press the right mouse button, change the direction of the view, and you can walk around with your keys. It's like in computer game. When you use your mouse scroll, you can Zoom out and zoom in. I'm sure that you will get used to this kind of control in a minute. OK, excellent. Now I will show you how to build a scene like this. While working in this environment, you switch between two modes, edit mode, like this, and run mode. In edit mode, you can place new elements to your simulation scene. For example, in our scene, we have a conveyor, retro reflective sensor, with a little mirror on the opposite side, and a box on the conveyor. In front of our conveyor, there is a control cabinet with two push buttons on it. It is green start button and red stop button. Almost every element in factory I.O. has connected tag. Click view and check sensor tags, actuator tags, and you can check show tags addresses. Click also Dock All Tags. Now you have a table with the list of all tags in this scene. We have Conveyor Tag. If you click on this name, it will be enlightened in this list. Then we have Sensor Tag. Start button tag, the second start button tag, which is 
the light. The first one is an input, and the second one is an output. The last one is the stop button light and stop button one. This is the input tag and this is the output tag. Now I will show you how to control this simulation with the list of tags. Press play to switch to run mode. And let's start with the conveyor tag. If you click twice on the name, you can change the name of this element. For example, conveyor entry. Next to the name, you can see the element number. You can change the number of this element. Next to the name, you have little green button. If the simulation is in run mode, you can press this little button. And now your tag and your element is in force mode. In force mode, you can control your actuator by clicking this button. Now, if you want to control the conveyor by the, the PLC and the interface that we configured, it will be not possible. You have to release the force mode from this tag. And now the interface between the PLC, SIM and factory I.O. has influence on this tag. Once again, now my tag conveyor is in force mode. I can control it in factory I.O. If you want to release the force mode, you have to click this button. Next to the force button, there is a little button to simulate failure of the signal. For example, if a contactor in a control cabinet will stack, our conveyor can be constantly turned on. And now our signal from PLC is not working. You can also change the state of the failure to constantly turn off the signal. Now we can we can also control the conveyor. It is constantly turned off. To turn off the uh, failure simulation, you have to click the third time this button. OK, and now we can switch on our conveyor. Let's move to the next element of our simulation. It is the retro reflective sensor. This sensor has tag in the table on the second row. Switch on run mode and move the box to the end of the conveyor close to the sensor. OK. You can see a little LED indicator on the sensor. If the sensor sees the mirror, the signal value is true. It is in high state. You can see it in this spot. This little icon is enlightened. If some object interrupts the sensor's ray, if it will cover the sensor's mirror, the signal will be false and this icon will be dark like this. You should know that you can also force sensor's signal. You have to just press this icon next to the sensor. Now the sensor is forced and it is in high state. If you press once again, it is forced and it is in false state, in low state. To release, you click this button. Now the sensor state is false. If I move a little backward this box, it is now in high state. If I go to drivers, I can map my sensors in this view. I put this sensor to address input 0 0.2. 
you can see that this sensor is now in high state. It is enlightened in vivid green. Okay, this is the end of this lesson. Thank you for your hard work and engagement. Let's summarize what we have done during the, this lesson. You have installed factory I.O. environment. You have connected factory I.O. simulation environment with PLC simulator. I introduced you into navigation and basic functions of factory I.O. Now you can create your own scenes and modify the scenes that we will deliver during this course. Thank you for watching and let's proceed to the next lesson. Hi, my name is Jacob from Controlbyte Company. All you need to know about automation and robotics. Today our topic is variables types for Siemens PLCs. Let's begin. Welcome to the next lesson of our Siemens PLC programming course. In this lesson I will give you a brief introduction to variable types. Let's begin. Under this video you can download template project for this lesson and template scene for factory I.O. Please open those two environments, open those projects and follow my instructions. Let's move on. In previous lesson we have declared some variables. You can find them in standard variable table. Those variables are x conveyor 1, x push button 1 and x push button 2. These variables are related to some factory I.O. elements. Those elements in our automation system can be described by, by two values. For example, we have a conveyor that can be turned off and can be turned on. If the variable value is false, it is switched off. If the value is true, it is switched on. We have also input signal from push buttons. These elements also can be described by two values, 0 and 1. The button can be pressed and released, 1 and 0, true and false. Now ask yourself a basic question. If all the elements in our automation system can be described by two values, true or false, Certainly not. Let's switch off the run mode. Click on the conveyor. Right mouse button. Go to configuration. And press analog. OK. Now go to view and click dock all tags. Now if you press play, you will see a special tag different from the others. If you control this tag, you can set conveyor speed. You can set conveyor speed from plus 10 to minus 10. This is the range of this variable. All the others variables were Boolean variables. It means that they could have only true or false value. This tag is real variable. It means that it can be described by floating point number. OK, now you know why you need different types of variables for. A little bit of theory about variables and constants. Variable and constant store data. They both have names. They have a specific type. They have address in the CPU memory. Variable changes value while program execution. Whereas constants do not change value 
during program execution. In this table, you can see basic types of variables available in TIA portal. In our Siemens PLC programming course, you will find exercises with practical application with all these types of variables. So far, in TIA portal, we have declared bool variables. Let's get back to TIA and declare the other types of variables. In TIA portal, you can declare variables in tag tables, data blocks, or you can declare function or function block, and declare variables in the interface of this function block. Now let's go back to tag table and let's declare variable necessary to control our conveyor by analog value. First of all, we have to map this tag in our driver configuration. As you can see, we have here roller conveyor. This is analog value, but we cannot connect it to any existing output. You have to go to configuration and change count of double word output to one. Now go back drag and drop this tag to, to QD30. OK, perfect. Now we have to declare proper variable in TIA portal and map this variable to the same address. Let's go to the TIA portal to tag table and let's start declaration by data type. You have to write real, press enter, and your real tag will be declared automatically in the input memory. As you can see, automatically operand identifier is I. You have to change the identifier to Q. It means that this will be output variable. Then you have to change the address by typing the number of 30. OK. Now we have to change the variable name. Let's go back for a moment to our variable type table. And let's check how real variables are described. In our course, we use Hungarian notation, it means that every variable in our tag table and data blocks will have prefix according to this table. Floating point numbers of type real will have prefix of R. In this row, you can see that real variable has four bytes of length in device memory. I will show you in a moment how does it look like in memory of the PLC. OK, now we can change the name of our real variable. We start with R, then capital letter, conveyor, speed. You can also add uh, the number at the end of the name. OK, perfect. Let's check our program. Now we can start PLC sim, download the configuration and our little program to the simulator and check if uh, all the variables are connected properly in the driver. 
Okay, my PLC sim is up and running. I can activate monitoring in tag table. Let's see if the driver works properly, if the communication is okay. Okay. Release forcing. Now you can start the simulation in factory IO. And now let's change the value of this variable in the PLC. In tag table, you cannot change the value of the variable. You have a special tool to do this. Go to the project tree, watch and force table, add a new watch table. Here you can write the first letter of your variable and just select it from the list. Okay, now turn on monitoring. Now let's modify the value of this variable. For example, we can type the value of 1, press enter, and you see a little checkbox in this area. It means that if you press this little lightning button, it will modify the value of this variable. So, I press this button and now actual value of our conveyor speed is 1. As you can see on the simulation, the conveyor is moving slowly. If we change the value 1.5 and press this button, it will go a little faster. You can check the value of the uh, variable in the factory I.O. tag list as well. Okay, this is the end of this lesson, of this exercise. Let's move on to the next lesson. I will work on the same project, so please don't close it. You, you can use it in the next lesson. Okay, let's continue working with variables. In previous video, I have showed you necessity of declaring variables of different types. We declared boolean variables and real variables. Now let's continue talking about variables. I will describe memory areas which are available in Siemens PLCs. Okay, let's go to TIA portal to variable table tag. You can go offline. And let's analyze this table. If you press address tab in the top of this column, you will sort every variable by address. Okay, now let's declare a variable in M memory. Select type bool tab. Now click on this address field, select M and type, for example, address number 10, bit number 0. We declared tag in M memory. In this memory, we can declare also different types of variables. For example, integer. This integer tag was automatically declared as a word, it means two bytes, on address 12. Change the name of this variable, for example, i counter. Integer variables are mostly used in counting applications. If you have many boxes moving on the production line, you have to count some of them, and you use integer variable to count these boxes. 
this boolean tag can be named as x temp. If you write your program in ladder logic, you have to declare some temporary variables to program your application. Why do we need different memory areas? Why do we need inputs, outputs and local memory M? When you configure your PLC, you define input channels and output channels. For example, this PLC unit has six digital input channels and four digital output channels. In device configuration, you have to define start address of this module for inputs and outputs. If you declare some of the variables in the tag table linked to these specified addresses, these variables will be permanently linked to physical input and output channels. That's why you need input and output memory area. There is a special tool to check uh, how your memory areas are configured. Click on your PLC in project tree, then go to tools, assignment list. This is graphical representation of your variables assignment in specific memory areas. As you can see, this is input and output memory area, and this is bit memory called M. Let's start with input and output memory area. As you see, there are two little dots in a table. If you click on the first dot, you will see tag name, which is written in this specific bit in memory area. We de declared push button 1 on the address i0.0. You can find this variable here in this table. You can locate the bit number and byte number for this variable. The same thing with output variable x conveyor 1. This variable was declared in output memory area q on byte number 0, bit number 0. If I change, for example, this bit number to 3, you can notice that it also moved in this assignment list. OK, you may wonder why there are only two dots in this memory area representation, whereas we have declared six variables. The answer is really simple. If you declare a variable but you don't use it in your program, memory reservation for this variable is not valid. So you have to use your variable in the program to see it reserved in the assignment list. So let's uh, use, for example, uh, integer variable. You have to click on this branch, click open branch, and click empty box. Now type 
move, enter, and write some integer number in the, in the output, type i, and select counter. OK, now compile your program. And go once again to assignment list. Click on the PLC tools assignment list. Now you can see in bit memory that two bytes were allocated for tag i counter one. In this view, you can see how much space does this variable require to allocate. Integer variable requires two bytes. It means one word. The, in the other words, it's 16 bits. OK, that's all for now. Thank you for watching. You can download the variable type list from uh, our lesson. It is attached under this video. Thank you for watching and let's go to the next lesson. Hi, this is Jacob from Control Byte Company again. Let's move on with our PLC course. Let's develop our factory I.O. scene. Let's add some new elements to the scene and let's exercise Boolean operations with ladder logic. Welcome to the next section of this PLC programming course. In this section, we will talk about bit logic operations. Beneath this video, you have two attachments, template of TIA project and the factory I.O. scene. You can download the files and start wor working with me, or you can continue working on your project from previous lesson. OK, let's go to Instructions window. Expand bit logic operations. Here you have basic instructions that we have already applied in previous lessons. Now I'd like to describe application of each instruction in detail. We have already used normally open contact and assignment instruction, coil. Normally open contact instruction consists of its graphical representation and linked variable, which is called operand. How does it work? Normally open contact is closed conduct signal when the operand has signal state 1. In this case, variable x push button on the address 0, 0.0, .0 has to be in high state. The value of this variable has to be true. Normally open contact is open, doesn't conduct signal when the operand has signal state 0. OK, let's go to TIA portal and let's check how it works. I have PLC sim running. I have also active online monitoring. And I have factory I.O also running. I will check the drivers, OK. OK. What does it mean that normally open contacts conducts or blocks signal? You can imagine this ladder diagram as electrical circuit. On the left, you have power rail on the right, you have ground. The power flows from the power rail to ground, from left to right. We connect our normally open contact to the power rail. The power rail in high state is in green. Now our normally open contact 
does not conduct the signal from power rail. It will conduct the signal if the connected operand is in high state, if this variable is true. To make this variable true, to make this variable in high state, we have to press the button. If we press the button, this little graphical representation of normally open contacts is in green as well as the power rail. It means that the signal state after this instruction is logical true. Let's go back to the presentation for a moment. What can you do with normally open contact? You can form logical operation, logical operation AND, and logical operation OR. You can build logical operation AND in your ladder diagram by placing two normally open contacts in series. The result of this operation, the signal state after the second normally open contact, is presented in this truth table. As you can see, both operands from the first normally open contact and second normally open contact must be true, must be in high state. To generate the signal of value true, at the output of this operation. Now let's move on to next logical operation. It is operation OR. To build such an operation in a ladder diagram, you have to place two normally open contacts in parallel. On the right you have truth table for this operation. As you can see, in OR operation, the output is true if at least one of the operands is true. Ok, enough talking, let's get to the TIA portal and do some exercises. Ok, my simulation is still running, I can control factory IO scene. Now I have to go offline, so that I can modify my code. In the previous lesson, we placed a normally open contact with one operand X push button 1. Let's place another normally open contact next to this instruction. To do this, you can click on the normally open contact from favorite bar, drag it and drop to this ladder branch. The next possibility to place a normally open contact is to click on the branch and use shortcut like shift plus F2. And the normally open contact appeared. Okay, the third option is to go to BitLogic operations in the library and also drag and drop it where you want. Ok, let's practice boolean operation and with this code and this fact factory IO scene. Let's program this scene with the following assumptions. When you press this start button, the box should go as far as the sensor at the end of this conveyor. When the box will reach the sensor, it should stop. To do this, you have to use signal from this button and from the sensor. OK. Now let's see if our sensor is properly defined as tag in our 
standard variable list. We have no sensor, so we have to define this tag. Go to drivers, place the sensor in the address i0.2, and type the, the sensor name in the tag table. OK. Let's go back to main OB1. Click on the normally open contact on the red text field. Type X and select our variable, which is X sensor one. Perfect. Now you have to download this code to your PLC SIM. Click download to device. Click load. Turn off monitoring. Reset the simulation. Remember to press play in factory I.O. environment. And let's analyze the online view of our program. As you can see, our first operand is in low state. That's why the normally open contact under this operand is in blue color. Whereas the second normally open contact is, in, is highlighted in green. That means that signal from X sensor 1 is in high state. We can check it in standard variable table. Click monitor all. And you will see that the signal from this sensor is true. The signal from the sensor is true because the sensor sees the mirror. Let's go back to main. Now let's see how the online view of our program will look like if I press the green button. OK, now look carefully. I will change the runtime speed. OK, and now I press the green button. I hold the button all the time. And look, the whole network, the whole ladder branch is highlighted in green. The push button one is in high state. The signal from sensor also is in high state. This means that the power from the power rail flows through those two normally open contacts and powers the coil at the end of the, this branch. This coil starts our conveyor. OK, look carefully. The box is at the end of the conveyor and it will reach the sensor. Now the signal from the sensor is in low state. That means that this normally open contacts blocks the signal fro flow from the left and does not give the power to the coil at the end. OK, that's all for now. Thank you for watching and continue to the next lesson. In the next lesson, we will build a ladder diagram for our operation and we will continue working on the same project. So don't close this project, just proceed to the next lesson. Hello and welcome. 
In this lesson, we will continue working with bit logic operations. I will show you how to use normally closed contacts in your ladder diagram. In this lesson, I will continue working on the same project from the previous lesson. If you want to synchronize your project with mine, you can download template, which is attached under this video. OK, let's start with a little bit of theory. In this picture, you can see graphical representation of normally closed contact. As you can see, it is really similar to normally open contact. The only difference is that you have a little line inside this contact. It informs you that principle of operation of this instruction is opposite to normally open contact. Normally closed contact is closed conduct signal from left to right when the operand has signal state 0. In this case, when i 0.0, .0 has signal state false. Normally closed contact is open, doesn't conduct signal, when the operand has signal state 1. With normally closed contact, you can form logical operation of NOR or NAND. Below you can see truth table for those two operations. Okay, now let's move on to TIA portal and let's write some code. Now I will show you practical application of normally closed contact in your ladder diagram. Okay, firstly, let's place a sensor in our factory IO scene. As far we have placed retro reflective sensor with a mirror. Now go to sensors and select the blue one. Place it before the orange one. OK, maybe a little left and perfect. Now go to drivers and map this diffuse sensor. Drivers. We have to add some new addresses in input area. Go to configuration and change the value of 4 to 5. Go back. And now you have to drag this diffuse sensor and drop it next to the newly added address. OK, let's go back to factory I.O. scene. Now go to TIA portal, PLC tags, standard variable table, and we have to declare another, another variable. X sensor it is boolean variable on the address i 0.4 byte 0 bit fourth okay now let's check the difference between those two sensors we have to start the simulation okay OK, I have to download the program and start the module. OK, perfect. Now go to PLC tags. Go online. And turn on monitoring. OK, now we can start the simulation. And let's move the box near the sensors.
Okay, let's analyze the signal from those two sensors. The first sensor is the orange one. Now this sensor signal is in high state, whereas the second sensor signal is false. Those two sensors work with different working principle. Diffuse sensor signal is in high state when it sees the object. The working principle of retroreflected sensor is opposite. This sensor signal is in high state when it doesn't see the object. Now the sensor sees the mirror. When I move the object in front of the sensor, its signal is false. OK, let's move on to write some code. Go to main OB1. And reset the simulation. OK, now the task for you. Let's change the program so that our bugs will stop in front of the diffuse sensor. So far, we have used this retroreflective sensor at the end of the conveyor. Now let's change our program so that the bugs will stop in this line. In previous version of our program, we used normally open contact with the operand as the retroreflective sensor's variable. Let's check what happens if we put in series also normally open contact with the second sensor's variable. Let's download the program to PLC sim. Okay. And monitoring on. Okay, perfect. Let's maybe turn the selector to one. Okay, my simulation is off. Now it's on. And as you see, the selector conducts the signal from the power rail. It goes to normally open contact of the first sensor and the green signal stops at the second sensor. Our system is not working properly because the second sensor's principle of operation is different, is opposite to the first sensor. To change it in our ladder diagram, we have to use normally closed contact with diffuse sensors operand. So let's go offline and let's change this normally open contact to normally closed contact. To do this, click twice left mouse button and check normally closed contact. Perfect. Now download the program to the PLC sim. And as you see, our program started instantly. And the bugs stopped in front of the diffuse sensor. OK, let's try this again. Reset the simulation. And let's analyze the program when uh, neither of the button is pressed or turned on. OK, now let's analyze the state of those two instructions. 
I will split my window and here I will go to watch enforce table and add new watch table. Now write the first sensor's name and the second sensor's name. Okay. Perfect. Okay, now let's analyze online view. Here we have sensors signal. The first sensor signal is true. It sees the mirror. The second sensor signal is false. This sensor is not seeing the object right now. Let's look at the normally open and normally closed contact. As you see, normally open contact now is highlighted in green. The operand connected to this instruction is true, so this contact will conduct our signal from left to right. The second instruction, normally closed contact, is also highlighted in green. The operand of this instruction is false. The state of the signal is false. Principle of operation of this instruction is opposite to normally open contact. So if the operand's signal state is false, this instruction will also conduct the signal from left to right. So now if we push the button or switch this selector, we will energize the coil at the end of this network. So my simulation is on. I will maybe um, make the simulation a little slower and I switch the selector. And now, as you see, the signals from uh, flows from the left to right through those two contacts, energizing the coil at the end. And when the box reaches the uh, second sensor, the diffuse sensor, the conveyor is no longer switched on, the coil is not energized. Now, the second sensor signal is true. It sees the box. I can move a little bit on the left. And as you see, everything depends on this signal right now. So now this signal state is true. This uh, little instruction inverts the logic of the signal and does not conduct the uh, signal from the left. So the green line stops at this instruction and the coil is not energized. Okay, this is the end of this lesson. I'm sure that you know the difference between normally open and normally closed contacts. You also should know the difference between the sensors, retro reflective sensor and diffuse sensor with normally closed signal and normally open signal. Thank you for watching and let's proceed to the next lesson. Hi, this is Jacob again. You have already programmed and or operations using normally open contacts. Now let's move on Let's introduce to our ladder logic code normally closed contacts. Let's begin. Hello and welcome. In this lesson, we will continue working with bit logic operations. I will show you how to use normally closed contacts in your ladder diagram. In this lesson, I will continue working on the same project from the previous lesson. If you want to synchronize your project with mine, you can download template, 
which is attached under this video. Ok, let's start with a little bit of theory. In this picture you can see graphical representation of normally closed contact. As you can see, it is really similar to normally open contact. The only difference is that you have a little line inside this contact. It informs you that principle of operation of this instruction is opposite to normally open contact. Normally closed contact is closed contact signal from left to right when the operand has signal state 0. In this case when I 0.0, .0 has signal state false. Normally closed contact is open, doesn't conduct signal, when the operand has signal state 1. With normally closed contact you can form logical operation of NOR or NAND. Below you can see truth table for those two operations. Ok, now let's move on to TIA portal and let's write some code. Now I will show you practical application of normally closed contact in your ladder diagram. Ok, firstly let's place a sensor in our factory I.O. scene. As far we have placed retro reflective sensor with a mirror. Now go to sensors and select the blue one. Place it before the orange one. Ok, maybe a little left and perfect. Now go to drivers and map this diffuse sensor. Drivers. We have to add some new addresses in input area, go to configuration and change the value of 4 to 5. Go back and now you have to drag this diffuse sensor and drop it next to the newly added address. Ok, let's go back to factory I.O. scene. Now go to TIA portal, PLC tags, standard variable table and we have to declare another, another variable. X sensor 2 It is boolean variable on the address i 0.4 byte 0 bit 4 ok now let's check the difference between those two sensors we have to start the simulation ok Ok, I have to download the program and start the module. Ok, perfect. Now go to PLC tags. Go online. And turn on monitoring. Ok, now we can start the simulation and let's move the box near the sensors. Ok, let's analyze the signal from those two sensors. The first sensor is the orange one. Now this sensor signal is in high state, whereas the second sensor signal is false. 
Those two sensors work with different working principle. Diffuse sensor signal is in high state when it sees the object. The working principle of retro-reflected sensor is opposite. This sensor signal is in high state when it doesn't see the object. Now the sensor sees the mirror. When I move the object in front of the sensor, its signal is false. OK, let's move on to write some code. Go to main OB1. and reset the simulation. Okay, now the task for you. Let's change the program so that our bugs will stop in front of the diffuse sensor. So far, we have used this retro reflective sensor at the end of the conveyor. Now let's change our program so that the bugs will stop in this line. In previous version of our program, we used normally open contact with the operand as the retro-reflective sensors variable. Let's check what happens if we put in series also normally open contact with the second sensors variable. Let's download the program to PLC SIM. OK. And monitoring on. OK, perfect. Let's maybe turn the selector to one. OK, my simulation is off. Now it's on. And as you see, the selector conducts the signal from the power rail. It goes to normally open contact of the first sensor. And the green signal stops at the second sensor. Our system is not working properly because the second sensor's principle of operation is different, is opposite to the first sensor. To change it in our ladder diagram, we have to use normally closed contact with diffuse sensor's operand. So let's go offline and let's change this normally open contact to normally close contact. To do this, click twice left mouse button and check normally closed contact. Perfect. Now download the program to the PLC SIM. And as you see, our program started instantly. And the box stopped in front of the diffuse sensor. OK, let's try this again. Reset the simulation. And let's analyze the program when uh, neither of the button is pressed or turned on. OK, now let's analyze the state of those two instructions. I will split my window and here I will go to watch enforce table and add new watch table. Now write the 
first sensor's name and the second sensor's name. Okay. Perfect. Okay, now let's analyze online view. Here we have sensors signal. The first sensor signal is true. It sees the mirror. The second sensor signal is false. This sensor is not seeing the object right now. Let's look at the normally open and normally closed contact. As you see, normally open contact now is highlighted in green. The operand connected to this instruction is true, so this contact will conduct our signal from left to right. The second instruction, normally closed contact, is also highlighted in green. The operand of this instruction is false. The state of the signal is false. Principle of operation of this instruction is opposite to normally open contact. So if the operand's signal state is false, this instruction will also conduct the signal from left to right. So now if we push the button or switch this selector, we will energize the coil at the end of this network. So my simulation is on. I will maybe um, make the simulation a little slower and I switch the selector. And now, as you see, the signals from uh, flows from the left to right through those two contacts, energizing the coil at the end. And when the box reaches the uh, second sensor, the diffuse sensor, the conveyor is no longer switched on. The coil is not energized. Now, the second sensor signal is true. It sees the box. I can move a little bit on the left. And as you see, everything depends on this signal right now. So now this signal state is true. This uh, little instruction inverts the logic of the signal and does not conduct the uh, signal from the left. So the green line stops at this instruction and the coil is not energized. Okay, this is the end of this lesson. I'm sure that you know the difference between normally open and normally closed contacts. You also should know the difference between the sensors, retro-reflective sensor and diffuse sensor with normally closed signal and normally open signal. Thank you for watching and let's proceed to the next lesson. You are probably asking yourself, how can I start my adventure with automation and robotics? It's quite simple. To begin, learn to program in Ladder Logic. I have prepared an entry-level course for you. This PLC training will allow you to quickly write simple programs using only a PLC simulator and your computer. In just one week, you will complete five useful projects We'll start with basic ladder logic instructions like normally open, normally closed contacts and coils. You will test your program using factory I.O., a simulation environment. You will start your project that involves a pneumatic actuator and two conveyors where you will learn about flip-flops and triggers. Then 
we will use timers to measure the transport time of a parcel and you will program alarms. Counters will be necessary to transport precise number of parcels in your system. Next, you will program a buffering line where you will use all the instructions, counters, timers, flip-flops and triggers. Finally, you will program a system for sorting pallets by height, a common task in many industrial settings. I will show you how to program sequential system in industrial application. My name is Jacob, I have over 10 years of experience in programming PLCs and robotic applications. Now, together with my partner, we are running a company called Controbyte. We specialize in developing software for industrial machines. We have created a platform with online courses where we teach PLC programming and industrial automation design. If you want to start your career as PLC programmer, enroll in our entry PLC programming course. You will write your first application just in one week. Enrolling the course, you will gain exclusive access to our Discord channel. There you can share ideas, ask questions and receive guidance. Enroll now and join the community that will help you become a PLC programmer.